So here I am inside of Windows File Explorer and I've got my secured folders accounting, finance, HR, legal, marketing, sales, very similar to what you would have on a file server. And I have the marketing folder selected and there are my files inside of the marketing folder that the team that works on our marketing documents have right there. Now, what's so interesting about that? Well, actually, these are synchronized from our team's files. And here is the marketing team. There's the general channel and here is the files tab. These are the same files. So here they are in Teams, here they are in Windows File Explorer. Teams, Windows File Explorer. How about I take it a step further? Here they are on the Teams app on my phone. Same files, mobile app, desktop app, Windows File Explorer. And that is what this video is all about. How we moved our shared files from SharePoint document libraries to Teams files while giving users the map drive look and feel inside Windows File Explorer. And here's what I'm gonna be covering. I'm gonna be covering why we moved into Teams files. I'm gonna do a cool demo right in our system. I'm gonna take you through app by app, the stuff that I use and I love about working with Teams files over SharePoint document libraries or box.com or a file server. And then I'm gonna finish up with pro tips on migrating to Teams files. So why Teams files? Well, first of all, Microsoft Teams makes your company better simply by how you intuitively work inside of it. It is much more efficient and more collaborative than doing email with shared folders inside of a file server. Just by how you post things in Teams, how you collaborate with your group, how you place files, everything is organized properly and it's very efficient to get into everything. When we think about the things we typically move people into Microsoft 365, we're typically doing email, files, and phones. And imagine if you had an app where everything, all those things were right next to each other. Click, 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 click. And everything was organized properly, not this big mess that typically is in a file server or typically is in individual mailboxes. But again, this is not a why Teams is great video. This is why I have our files in Microsoft Teams video. And ultimately, collaboration with files in Teams is much more efficient than collaborating with files inside of email and a file server. But the thing that really drove me to move our files from SharePoint document libraries into Microsoft Teams files were retention policies. Inside of Microsoft 365, there are no backup systems to manage or maintain. What you do have to manage and set and configure are retention policies. And I have another video in our YouTube channel about retention policies. Critically important. You need to check it out. You need to get them set up in your organization. Do not rely on the default settings that are inside of Office 365. But with SharePoint, what we would do is when we would get a client's files move from their file server up to SharePoint, we would create a SharePoint site and then create individual document libraries inside that site. And the problem with retention policies is that I have to set a retention policy on a site by site level in SharePoint. With Teams, I can set it on a team by team basis because the technology inside of Microsoft Teams uses Office 365 groups. And ultimately part of that is using SharePoint document libraries. But working with Teams makes all of this a lot easier and simpler and intuitive to work with. So when I realized with Teams, I could set the marketing group to have a retention policy of seven years. I could set the legal and HR group to have a forever retention policy, but I could set the retention policies on a team by team basis. Then I said, great, we're gonna go ahead and move our files from SharePoint document libraries into Teams. And as I will show you in the demo, administration and security in Teams is much simpler and intuitive than SharePoint document libraries. And lastly, all the coolest stuff that Microsoft is doing is going in to Microsoft Teams. It is their flagship productivity app. And it's not even that old, but everything is going into it. So you need to start looking to move beyond Outlook and Windows File Explorer and a file server. You need to look at how you would incorporate Teams. It's a little bit of training and it's just by how you intuitively work in Teams is where it performs its magic. But again, this is not a why Teams is cool video. This is about getting your files inside of Teams. Okay, so now it's demo time. So I'm gonna review real quick the first thing that I showed you when I started this video. It's the same shared folder viewed through Teams 
Windows File Explorer, and also the Teams mobile app. So here's my marketing folder, and here are my marketing files. And here is the marketing folder through Teams. And here are the same marketing files inside the Teams mobile app. So before we get into Windows File Explorer, I'm gonna talk about OneDrive because OneDrive is the app and the technology that we need to use to be able to work with these Teams files inside of Windows File Explorer and be able to get offline access to these files. So first of all, let's go ahead and pull up OneDrive. So here's OneDrive. If I just right clicked on the app on my taskbar, this would pop up. And what's really important is I have to click this right here, which is Files on Demand. So I'm gonna demo that a little bit further in just a minute, but that has to be checked. And then when I click on Account, you'll see that OneDrive is synchronizing all of these files inside of these Teams channels. Accounting, finance, HR, legal, et cetera, et cetera. It's the same ones that were, are right here. So now that I have OneDrive set up, I can go into Windows File Explorer and I can show that off a little bit. So with OneDrive and with Teams files and with the synchronization set up and files on demand, I now have something that looks very similar to Map Drives, very intuitive for the users to work with. And so I have the full capability to be able to take a file, you know, drag it over into an individual folder if I want to, drag it onto a USB drive, put it in my OneDrive. Then with files on demand, I now have synchronized files or synchronized folders on my computer. That means that I can access these files offline if I need to. So here, with files on demand, it's more intelligent than just a straight up synchronization. You can see here that some of these files I have have little cloud icons. That just means that the name of the file has been synchronized, but the file itself is not. As a matter of fact, if I click on the file, go to properties, you can see that the file size is 1.4 megabytes, but the size of my disk is zero. But I can still search on it, I can see it's there, and if I double click on it, it will do a sync and bring that file local. And it'll stay synced for a while until File Explorer starts to think that I really don't need that file anymore, and then it'll just free up that space on its own. Now, if you want to tell OneDrive, always keep this folder, or always keep this file synchronized, no problem. I could go to the entire marketing folder, and I could say always keep on this device, and it will always synchronize everything. Or if I just want to synchronize a group of files, I could just right click on them and say always keep on this device. And it will always keep those synchronized until I tell it to free up space. Now, if I have a file, let's say this blog to Skype for Business, I click on this and it is synchronized. I could say, you know what, I don't need it anymore. I could choose to free up space and then it will keep the name of the file there, but the file itself will not be taking any space on my computer. So next I wanna show you where the retention policies are set, which is the thing that drove me to get our files moved into Teams in the first place. So here I am, protection.office.com, or you could go into portal.office.com and go to the admin section under security and compliance, and then just, they'll take you right to your retention. So I click on here, and if I click on this create, I can make a new retention policy. I can go um, Teams seven year, and I could click on this, and I can go ahead and accept these defaults. And then what I can do here is what is really important. I could un unselect these because I don't need these. You can see SharePoint sites, I have to do this on a site-by-site -site basis, which is not ideal. And Office 365 groups, I can go ahead and choose this and I can choose the groups. And I can go and select this. And you know, if I, for example, if I wanted to set something for sales, I could go ahead and choose this. And now I could set the seven year retention policy for sales. Or if I wanted to choose legal or HR and I want to have a forever retention policy for them, I could go ahead and do that. But it's important to understand I could do that on a team by team basis. So in other words, if I want to have a different retention policy for sales, if I want a different retention policy for marketing, HR, but on a team by team basis, I can set those retention policies, which is super helpful. Now let me show you how we set up permissions on the file shares inside of Teams files. Well, it's really just a matter of going to the marketing team, clicking on the little Lisp, click manage team, that's it. I can add members, remove members, that's it. This is definitely more intuitive than working in SharePoint document libraries or working on a file server. And again, the underlying technologies are still Office 365 groups and SharePoint document libraries. 
but it's a much more intuitive, much simpler user interface to work with and still very secure. Because what I tell people is, if you're trying to determine when you should make a team or create a team, think of them as security groups. So anybody who is in the marketing team is going to have access to all of the channels that are inside of the marketing team. If you needed to have another marketing group with a different set of permissions, you would make another marketing team. Now I'm going to finish up with some pro tips. Zerillion went on a journey from having a file server to a box.com account to SharePoint document libraries and now Teams files. And we've been heavy into Teams for just about a year now. And this is February 2019. I would say Teams has reduced my email and my mailbox by 90%. Now, all of my collaboration, all of our internal collaboration is done inside of Microsoft Teams. And working with Teams and files together is phenomenal. And the interesting thing is that Teams files accessed by Windows File Explorer is a great way to get into Teams without freaking out your users. If you go to users and say, well, I've determined we're moving from our file server and we're going to move into Microsoft Teams, I don't think that's going to go over real well. But if you say, well, I'm moving into Teams, but for everybody it's going to be looking like this, like map drives like they're used to. Well, that's the same conversation that we have when we talk to people about getting set up in SharePoint document libraries. This is what we set them up with. And it looks very similar to them to having map drives, but then they don't have all the legacy nonsense that goes with having a file server. They get all these sophisticated enterprise level capabilities, but it still looks and feels like map drives. And you can get your company moved into Teams files without having them have to actually go in and work with the files inside of this structure here. But again, there's a lot to be said for working with files inside of Teams, but again, that's a different video. I would absolutely migrate to Teams files instead of SharePoint online document libraries talking to you here in February 2019. No question about it. And when you think about security and how you're setting up security, think about it as team groupings, not traditional security groups. So again, if I go back to here, when you're trying to put your structure together, your file server structure together in Microsoft Teams, you would do it here based on these Teams groupings. You know, marketing, HR, recruiting, sales, these are essentially like having separate security groups. And make sure you set up your retention policies. They're super important. Again, there are no backup systems to manage when you have a Microsoft 365 system. Microsoft's got that part taken care of. What you need to do is manage your retention policies. And you need to determine what's it going to be for overall data? What's it going to be for our legal documents? What's it going to be for HR data? The data just sitting there and growing gets messier and it creates more risk for you. You need to clean it up. But you could have some data, some files, that you would actually keep a forever retention policy. But you got to have them established. And this is one of the best reasons to move into Microsoft Teams. And as always, either get some training so you can do this right from the start, or get a pro to get you launched properly. But don't just go and click your way through and think everything's going to work out. And when it doesn't, you're going to go, well, this thing isn't any good. It's phenomenal. You just got to get it done right. I'm really glad we have our files in Microsoft Teams, and it's a great place for you to start on your journey into Teams, moving your files in there, but using Windows File Explorer and giving your users that map drive look and feel. If it's something you can work with yourself, fantastic. I hope this gives you guidance so you can start that journey. Remember to get a little bit of training in place first. And then the other thing is if you are not sure, you can talk to your IT company. If you want to talk with us, fantastic. You can reach us at support at zerillion.com or you can call us 847-995-9800 or you can check us out further on our YouTube channel and you can follow us on our Facebook page. Anyway, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.